I cannot, for the life of me, understand why the majority would send these three letters just to these three states that leave us with no other conclusion that there may be some rank partisanship in this investigation. As was stated at the beginning, the bipartisan nature of oversight is what gives it its power. And what we are seeing are investigations uh, into, and I believe that, that the methodology for these three states is highly questionable. Um, I ask uh, for this committee, if we're gonna perform oversight, then let's perform oversight. This hearing is called Federal Pandemic Spending, a Prescription for Waste, Abuse, and Fraud. UI, unemployment uh, assistance, um, the Paycheck Protection Program, all of it. And in the wind up to this hearing on January 13th, I see that the chair sent several letters to three states, um, Pennsylvania, California, and my home state of New York with serious allegations of widespread fraud and abuse. Um, but I'm curious a little bit about how we got to these three states. Mr. Daddario, if you were auditing or investigating what went wrong in states in the distribution of pandemic-related unemployment insurance, how would you go about choosing which states to examine? Well, we would look at a number of factors. One would be the uh, amount of money that would go there. We would look for geographic distribution of, of the programs. We would look for uh, other characteristics of state uh, programs, a number of claims, for example, that have been been there. And so we, we, would have, we, we would take a nationwide sample. Overall, let's say not from per capita, what would be some of the top states that you would look at in terms of your experience and, and oversight of these programs? Well, uh, certainly California and New York are always candidates to, to look at in those cases. But you have Michigan, you have Florida, you have states uh, in the south and the west. And that, so we would have a geographic distribution uh, in order to make sure that, that we you. cover the money. I'd like to submit to the record uh, this report um, from the Pandemic Response Accountability Committee uh, state, entitled Key Insights State Pandemic Unemployment Insurance Programs. Um, now, Mr. Hartz and Mr. Dodaro, can you think of any methodology uh, that would have brought the committee to send those three letters specifically to just those three states? I, I, I would defer to the committee. I, I don't really know what their, their objectives were in that case, and I, I don't think... I understand. I, yeah. I, um, now, I wanted to get into this report. Um, in, according to this report, in PRAC, for example, Arizona paid $1.6 billion to individuals uh, to stolen identities to get unemployment insurance benefits. Louisiana dispersed more than $1 million to individuals after the date of their death. And in Kentucky... State employees applied for unemployment benefits while still employed by the state and were able to hack the state's information management system and remove holds on their own accounts. And none of these states have been put under investigation by this committee. I find it very interesting because, as was stated at the beginning, the bipartisan nature of oversight is what gives it its power. And what we are seeing are investigations uh, into, and I believe that, that the methodology for these three states is highly questionable. Congressional Democrats are ready to perform that oversight and help our constituents get the benefits they need to pay their bills. And I think that there's no shortage of members of this committee who are willing to stand up to their own party when it's necessary. Uh, but I cannot, for the life of me, understand why the majority would send these three letters just to these three states that leave us with no other conclusion that there may be some rank partisanship in this investigation. I mean, Republicans, uh, I ask, you know, if we're going to start off, let's do it right. And with that, I yield my time.